This is not a drill and it is most certainly not clickbait. I'm about to show you all how to sublimate on 100% cotton t-shirts, no HTV required, and this could very well change this game forever. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants, where I show you sublimation and cricket tutorials multiple times every single week. And y'all, I will say this, go ahead, buckle up your seatbelts, hold on tight, because y'all's minds are about to be blown. I can't take full credit for this. Check out Adeline Austin over on TikTok. I will have her video listed and linked down below. Spread some crafty love, give her a follow, give her a like. I will say this, whenever I was trying everything in her video, I just could not get it to work for me. Um, I have done a lot of trial and error, but maybe I was just misunderstanding her directions or maybe I purchased the wrong thing. I don't know. But I will say this, I have spent so much money trying to perfect this. Is it perfect? Not quite, not yet, but I am on a full blown journey at this point to make sure it is perfect. And I will say, it's probably about 99% of the way there. So I am using this inkjet transparency film. Adeline in her video uh, said she was using a pet film and believe me, I have ordered all different types of pet films to use with my Epson printer that has been converted over to sublimation. I cannot get anything to work except for this stuff right here. I will also say that I have collaborated a lot with Crystal Lane over on the Design Bundles YouTube channel. Be sure to check her out. She's actually working on a video for this as well. And um, we, we, we've we basically come to the same conclusions on a lot of this stuff together. But this is what I'm using. Um, Adeline in her TikTok video was also saying she was using a hot melt adhesive or a hot melt powder. And I'm using this stuff right here. I have switched it over to like this little glass canister, but I will have it listed and linked down below. I've tried multiple powders so far. This stuff, the stuff that is listed and linked down below has seemed to work the best. Again, we will also need a sublimation printer. Um, I'm using an Epson printer that has been converted over to sublimation. If you are using a Sawgrass printer, be sure to check out Crystal's video over on Design Bundles. If it is out, which it should be out by now, I will have that listed and linked down below as well. And we will also need a design a really awesome design to put onto our cotton t-shirt. And I'm using this one right here. Now listen y'all, Crafty is honestly where it's at. If you want high quality, optimized files for your cutting machine, for sublimation, for your laser, for embroidery, if you want access to tons of fonts, I mean, Crafty's where it's at. I'm gonna go in here. Since this is for sublimation, I will just do the PNG version and then do a one-click download, like so. I'm also gonna be using canva.com for all this. I use Canva all the time for sublimation. It is a free account. You do not need to pay for Canva to do sublimation. So I'm gonna come over here, click on custom size, make sure that the unit of measurement is set over two inches. And since we are gonna be using an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of transparency film, let's go in here for the width, put 8.5. And then for the height, put in 11 and then click on create a new design. Now I am using Chrome, so my, my downloaded file is right down here. So let's go ahead and drag this over here and onto the screen. It'll go ahead and pop into place like so. And we can go ahead and resize this some as well. That right there looks pretty good. Um, let's also go ahead and mirror this or as Canva calls it, flip it. So let's just click on flip, flip horizontal. That way it will print out correctly. Obviously you could also just go ahead and mirror your design whenever printing as well. Um, I am also gonna go in here, click on edit image. Let's crank up that contrast, that saturation, maybe lower that brightness just a tad to get a really vivid, vibrant design like so. And then let's come up here and click on share, click on download, change that file type from PNG to a PDF print since it does say that it is the best for printing and then download. And now from there, you'll just go through the process of printing that out with your Epson. Just a little tip for you all, whenever selecting the media type, for my Epson, I selected auto select. That is the setting that worked for me where it actually printed out on this transparency film. Do some testing on your end, but the auto select option worked best for me. 
Now I have already printed out my design and here it is right here. You will wanna make sure that you are printing on the correct side. The packaging itself shows you which is the correct side. But in case you don't see that, just kind of feel to see which side has a little bit more of a grip to it. And that is the side that you wanna print on. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and sprinkle on some of that powder. From there, you just really kind of want to shake this powder around to make sure that everything is covered. You're not going to be wasting any of this, so don't even worry about it. I know it seems like a lot. All right, so once you got everything covered, and, and you can tell it is covered because it does have like this little white frosted texture to the printed area. Once you sprinkle this over top, you can go ahead and just dump it right back in like so. You can also just go in here and just kind of tap the film just to shake off anything that's extra. And if it didn't quite stick to some areas, just go back in there and sprinkle a little bit more on there. I'm also gonna go in here and grab a little paintbrush or just really something soft and smooth and not go over, I repeat, do not go over any of the printed design, but just try to scrape off or brush off some of that powder that's may stuck a little bit to the outer edges of the film. Now, as far as your heat press goes, I have played around with the temperature quite a bit. And what I have found to work best for me is around 385 degrees for 90 seconds, which seems like a lot. I know, 90 seconds, it seems like a lot, but it seems like it works better, gives you a little bit more time to kind of get this peeled off, because even though I know Adeline says that the code peel works best for her, again, maybe I just don't have the right, right materials, um, but for me, whenever I was trying this, a hot peel works the best, only after pressing for around 90 seconds or so. Now, while this is heating up, I am gonna go ahead and just swing this away and then put our film onto the actual lower platen of the heat press, this area right here, with the powder side facing up. And basically, I just kind of want that powder to basically just kind of bake into the actual film and into the actual ink as well. All right, so it is preheated. Let me go ahead and swing this away. And it looks like that powder has kind of all melted into the actual film. So it did once have like more of like a, a powder sugar, like a, a frosted effect to it overall. And now it has mostly just kind of baked back into that film. Let me go ahead and kind of hold this over to the bottom edge of this as well, just for a little bit, get that kind of all melted in because there's a little bit of that texture. I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, uh, still a little bit of that texture is being seen right down here. All right, so that all looks good. Let's go ahead and roll with that. And let's also go ahead and put our shirt on to the actual heat press. And let's go ahead and pre-press this, kind of get all of the, the moisture, all the wrinkles and everything out and ready for the actual film. And then as far as preheating goes, 10 seconds or so should do the trick. All right, let's go ahead and flop this on here onto our t-shirt exactly where we want it to go. Let's go ahead and swing this back around and let's go ahead and press it. I am not putting down a cover sheet over top of this. It's very unlike me, but it seems, it seems, it seems like it does better without one for this particular purpose. Again, I am just going through and studying and testing out as much as I possibly can with this. And trust me, there are more videos to come on this topic. Let's go ahead and press this down. 385 degrees, 90 seconds. And while that is counting down, I'm gonna go ahead and grab some heat resistant gloves. Very important to have heat resistant gloves because you do wanna go ahead and pull this off right after you're done pressing and it can be extremely hot, especially for being on that heat press for so long. All right, so as soon as it goes off, go ahead and swing that away or pull it out, have whatever kind of heat press you have. And then I'm going to very carefully grab this, hold it down and start peeling this back. I'm also grabbing a sheet of parchment paper. It's very important that it is parchment paper. Butcher paper will not work for this. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this back up. And we're gonna go ahead and press this again for 15 seconds. The parchment paper should really kind of go ahead and help smooth everything out onto the shirt and really set that ink deep into the shirt fibers. Now, I already know there'll be plenty of questions in the comments asking, how does this hold up when you wash it? And the thing is, I have ran so many tests with shirts exactly like this one 
basically doing things that you're not supposed to be doing, like washing it in hot, hot water, plenty of detergent and fabric softener, drying it in the dryer on high heat. And let me just say, it has not gone anywhere. It has not faded one bit. It is like, honestly, so freaking amazing. I'm so here for it. And also just remember, this is not the final destination. Like I am on a journey with this. More videos to come where I am going to attempt to perfect this process because I am honestly so freaking obsessed with it. Huge thanks again to Adeline Austin over on TikTok. Her videos will be listed and linked down below. Spread some of that crafty love around to give her a follow. And if you are new right here to this channel and want to learn more about this kind of stuff, be sure to stamp that subscribe button and ring that little bell for all of the notifications. And if you liked this episode, please also consider just taking a few quick seconds. It's free to stamp that like button and drop a comment down below. Thanks so much for watching y'all. I love y'all to the freaking moon and back. And until next time, stay crafty.